Today, I want to talk about what you should expect from OU and Texas as we head into the last full week ahead of National Signing Day. And all that's coming up after the bumper. Don't be cornering me. Hold up. Time. You got to help me with that, that corner sh**. <laughs> What's up, kid folk? It's RJ Young. I am not on a step mill. Consider hitting the like and subscribe button because I upload a video every single day. It's always college football related, sports related. We have a good time today. I want to talk about Texas, Alabama, Kamar Wheaton, Eric Gray, and the like. So let's start with this. The news is Robert Gillespie has accepted the running backs coach job at Alabama after having had that job at North Carolina. Many of you will know that Robert Gillespie was, yes, running backs coach for, well, the two best running backs anywhere outside of the SEC, both Javante Williams and Michael Carter at UNC. Both of those guys are going in the NFL draft. Both of those guys expect to be drafted in the first four rounds, and I think they will be, and that was remarkable what they did last year behind Sam Howell, and Robert Gillespie was a big part of that. I also got a tie to Robert Gillespie in that I grew up in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. He went to Hattiesburg High, and when I was about 12 years old, Robert Gillespie was absolutely destroying people. He was a super prep All-American, an outstanding player, and I'm really happy to see him getting closer to home. But I also think that goes into the decision of Kamara Wheaton, who right now is committed to Alabama and still has yet to sign. He gets to sign on National Signing Day on February 3rd. But Oklahoma is also still really pursuing him hard. They have not given up on the prospect of landing the five-star running back at a Lake Centennial. And it's the only guy that they've wanted to add in this class. And we know that because Eric Gray, former Tennessee running back and in the transfer portal, has taken trips to Austin and Oklahoma, but as is reported by OU Insider, has not actually been offered a scholarship at Oklahoma. Meanwhile, new coaches at Texas putting the full court press on one Eric Gray. So you can see what Oklahoma would like to get done. But also knowing that Austin is right there and knowing that Keontae Ingram entered the transfer portal, you got Bijan Robinson, Roshan Johnson basically going to be your one-two punch. You get to add a Eric Gray to that, you get good in a hurry because that's what the portal allows you to do. It allows you to get good in a hurry. And one of the things to like about this staff that Steve Sarkeesian has put together is everybody has playoff experience, right? Right down to Jeff Choate, who's coming from Montana State to be co-defense coordinator, linebackers coach. He's been in the FCS playoffs with Montana State. Of course, Pete Kwiatkowski has also been to the playoffs at the college football playoff level at Washington. Steve Sarkeesian won a national championship. Jeff Banks won a national championship. A.G. Milwee won a national championship. And with the raid on Saban's staff, one of the things that Sarkeesian was asked is, you think that Coach Saban's going to be okay? Yes, I think that Coach Saban's going to be okay because that's what he's used to. He's used to half the staff taking a job elsewhere better. Sometimes it's a lateral move. Sometimes they just want to get out of Tuscaloosa. And then building again, Robert Gillespie is an example of that. Mac Brown now has to go find the next best up and, be, uh, up and coming running backs coach. But as we get into these last few days of the 2021 cycle, I've been interested in what I've heard coming out of Austin, which is that those coaches are going big game hunting. There's going to be a visit that's paid to JT Tuimo Lau. Now, I still think, like most people, he's an Ohio State lean, right? But it doesn't hurt for Kwiatkowski to be like, look, Texas is bigger. Texas has a larger fan base. We're going to put together this, uh, or we have put together this awesome staff. Just give us a look if you can. That's really difficult in a dead period, and I don't really think that that's anything more than a shot in the dark, but I would not discourage anybody from doing that, especially with just over a week left, National Signing Day, right? I also think that it's interesting to look at the staff and say, look, this is the kind of staff that's put together with one goal in mind, which is to win the national championship. It ain't to beat Oklahoma. It ain't to beat, win the Big 12. It's to win the national championship. And when you take a look at Texas and what they have been, it's also really wild to think that they haven't been good for so long when they were good for a long period of time. As a matter of fact, I was having this discussion with my best friend Ron as I'm building out Dynasty uh, on my NCAA 14 I just got, which is to say there were no bad Texas teams on those video games. None. Because, like, right until the end, they were still pretty decent. They weren't bad. 
And that's also the other thing about Texas. They've only been bad a couple of times in the last 20 years. They haven't been absolutely good, though, in the last 10. And that's what we're really looking at Texas, and that's what Texas wants to change. You know, you got Emmanuel Acho going out there, putting on his Texas jersey, talking about this is the Miracle Staff. Now you got to put it all together, and that starts with recruiting. So I'm going to look and see what big recruits they can land, what guys out of the transfer portal they can go get, and how everybody's going to feel going into what we hope was going to be a pretty cool and lively spring ball. I was asked last night to give some thoughts on Robert Gillespie, and I think he's going to fit right in with Charles Huff, or where, where Charles Huff left, which is being an outstanding recruiter, right? That was Charles Huff's ca calling card, and that's usually what the running back's coach is best at. Kale Gundy, running back's coach for a long time at Oklahoma, it's best recruiter for years, right? That's what DeMarco Murray was brought in to do, and that's one of the reasons why this Damani Jackson, or Damani Jackson, I got his name written down right here, why the Kamara Wheaton pursuit is such a big deal. That's the other thing that I thought was interesting about his situation in particular. Now, Carl Scott, primary recruiter on him, right, for a while, but Charles Huff is the coach, secondary, that he would be playing for, right? That guy's at Marshall now, and I don't see uh, Kamara Wheaton following Charles Huff to Marshall. He's just not he, – he has better opportunities, right? We all get that. We all understand that. And seeing him go into what is going to be a loaded Alabama backfield, Brian Robinson, Trey Sanders, Jace McClellan, to name just a few, you could go to Oklahoma and you're going to get the ball. You're going to touch the ball, right? We understand that in year one you're going to do that because you're that great A tailback and they pursued you like they pursued a quarterback, right? Meanwhile, <laughs> Texas is like, yo, Eric Gray, look, offer, no offer. Let's make this simple. So I'm going to be interested to see how much longer he's willing to wait and see about this as coaches are going to start smelling blood in the water and, and try to go land that commitment. All right, that's it for me. Deuces.